Good morning. Please stand as you are able and join us in our call to worship. may be seated. The Lord be with you. 
welcome this morning. Welcome to First Lutheran. We are so glad that you're worshiping with us, whether it be in person, whether it be on a radio, whether it be through social media. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. Our radio broadcast this morning is sponsored by Ray Schmidt in memory of Ray's mother, Darlene Schmidt. I want to ask if you are visiting with us or a guest today that you fill out a Connect card. You'll find them in the, in the back of the pew. Also, you'll notice a little strip of paper taped to the back of the uh, pews. I hope it's there. It is. I got a nod. Okay. And on there are two QR codes, one that says prayer request and one that says connect with us. Take your smartphone, scan that, and uh, you will be able to enter a prayer request or connect with us if you have any pastoral concerns. If you don't have a smartphone, you're welcome to call the church or email us or get a hold of us any way that you choose. A couple of announcements that I want to lift up before we get started. Our Christmas program is coming up. That is on December 8th and on Wednesday, December 11th. That is for our children. <coughs> Next Sunday, our college students that are home visiting for Thanksgiving will be leading our worship service. I want to note that the church is going to be closed on Thursday and Friday. However, my phone number is in the bulletin, as is email. If there's something that comes up, please do not hesitate calling. We have a temple talk this morning, and I invite, uh, before I do that, though, there's one last announcement. Uh, I want to raise up uh, Jan Mann, used to be a member here. She moved to Flo uh, Arizona not too long ago, and she just recently passed away. You'll see a note in the bulletin about that and an address where you may send cards if you choose to do, do so. Now, finally, uh, a temple talk from Shan. I have to tell you what happened here. This is the problem when I said, Shana, how do you pronounce your name? <laughs> Shana, Shana. And she says, Shana Banana. <laughs> Shana. Never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to go any further here. It's just not working. <laughs> I tried. That's okay. Good morning. I guess I don't have to say my name, but maybe I'll say it again. Shanna. I'm Shanna Zarbach. <laughs> And I am going to be talking about First Fruits Made Simple. Over the course of the last few weeks, you have been hearing about, and sometimes maybe sampling, fruits. First Fruits to First Lutheran. Nehemiah 10.35 says, We obligate ourselves to bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all fruit of every tree, year by year, to the house of the Lord. How can we apply that to today? In contemporary Christian practice, the concept of first fruits can extend beyond agriculture to various aspects of life, such as giving the first parts of one's treasure, time, or talents to God. Today, I'm going to focus on the giving of our treasure or our income and first fruits giving as a way to put God primary in everything and demonstrate trust in his continued provisions. Fruit. Fruit is a food it seems most people enjoy. It's simple and it's easy to prepare. There isn't a lot of prep work that goes into it. We wash the fruit and we enjoy it. It's simple. However, it seems like life may not be so simple these days. Things can be complicated and busy and we might fall behind on our obligations in various ways and at various times. There is a method available via our website whereby one can set up automatic giving or simply giving. We have a picture of our website landing page. And if you click on the dollar sign, the green dollar sign on the bottom, you can set up reoccurring payments each and every month, year after year. We have been doing this in our household for many years now. And we know that our first fruits are shared with the church, not what's left over or when we think to write a check or remember to bring cash. It's intentional and it's simple you might consider this as an option for yourself going forward. As we advance through the slides, you can see that once you click on this button, there are several options that you can select in which to give a reoccurring or a simply giving payment. You can select the general fund, the women's program, the senior trip, and so on and so forth. And then after you make that selection, when you click the donate button, if we go maybe a slide or two more, 
you can see where you can add that to your cart. I think one more slide there, and maybe one more. Those are all the options. There's lots of options. And then you can select it and put it in your cart, and you make an account, and then it's done. And it will be reoccurring and will continue to go on. If you do have any questions, you can ask myself or another member of the task force. There are several of us here today. We'll be handing out some little fruit treats after the service. So that is one option. And then I do want to make mention uh, Venmo is another giving option that will be coming soon. It's not quite yet set up, but we will have Venmo as another option. So thank you for sharing your first fruits with First Lutheran. Thank you, Shanna. I've been saying that over and over in my head just to be safe. <laughs> Samantha, would you please come up for our faith chest presentations? I invite the families of Ivor Christensen and Austin Nifke to come forward, please. Come and join us up here, up front. Alex and Whitney and Eric and Carolyn. When Ivor and Austin were baptized, they were claimed forever as a child of God. At that celebration, you made some promises to nurture them in the Christian faith, to bring them to worship and teach them about the Bible, the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. You promised to do all those things so that Ivor and Austin can learn to trust God and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ through their words and deeds. Our congregation helps families fulfill these promises in many ways, one of which is by giving you one of these beautiful faith chests behind you. We invite you to place in this treasure box anything that makes an impact on Ivor and Austin's life of faith. Things like your baptismal certificate, Bibles, and milestone experiences, and you might also include crafts and drawings, anything that's spiritually meaningful to Ivor and Austin. It is our hope that this faith chest as is a reminder of the partnership between our congregation and your family. The fact that it is unfinished means that our work and God's work with Ivor and Austin is also not yet finished. So as you fill the insides with faith treasures, we invite you to work together as a family to apply a finishing coat to the outside and to make it their own. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, we praise your name for the love and grace that you pour out on our lives. Today, we praise you especially for Ivor and Austin. Blessed Alex, Whitney, and Whitney, and Eric and Carolyn, and their families, as they walk this journey of faith together, light the way for them and encourage them at all times. Bless also these faith chests, that it may help them focus on your love and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Let us celebrate with applause. And you may go sit down. Thank you. As we go to worship, let's take a moment or two, take a deep breath, close your eyes if you choose. And allow the Holy Spirit to enter into your heart and silence all voices but those of our Lord. Wes. Please join us in our opening song.
I invite the assembly to stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, our refuge, our delight, our beginning, and our end. Amen. Let us come in truth before the one who loves us and has freed us from our sin. Eternal One, robed in majesty and mercy, we confess that sin has taken hold of us and we are complicit in its powers. We are disturbed in spirit and our hearts cannot rest. Unbind us and set us free. Lead us again to the waters of rebirth that we may live just and generous lives for the good of your world and for the care of our neighbors following in the servant way of Jesus. Amen. These words are trustworthy and true. Christ bore our sins once and for all on the cross, swallowing up death forever. For his sake, you are forgiven, and God remembers your sin no more. Let your hearts be glad again and rejoice in your salvation. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are anointed your beloved Son to be priest and sovereign forever. Grant that all the people of the earth, now divided by the power of sin, may be united by the glorious and gentle rule of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The assembly may be seated.
Good morning. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, 9 through 10, and 13 and 14. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousand served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were open. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Our second reading is from Revelation chapter 1, beginning at the fourth verse. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So, you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated.
Would you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may have heard, if you're playing, paying close attention to the music and the readings, that there's royalty in the midst. This is called Christ the King Sunday, and the readings all reflect that. However, considering that Thanksgiving is right around the corner, I want to take a slightly different approach than talking about Christ the King. Author A.J. Jacobs, a newspaper reporter and an author, wrote the book Thanks a Thousand, A Gratitude Journey. In one chapter, he sets out to thank everyone who is involved with getting his morning cup of coffee. Obviously, the journey started with thanking the barista for his morning cup of coffee. But then things got strange. Jacobs progressed in his journey of gratitude, and he set out to thank the people that made that cup of coffee possible. The truck driver that delivered the supplies to the coffee bar where he frequents. But then he got to thinking, if the truck driver is delivering the supplies to the coffee place, what about the people that paved the road and made it smooth so that that truck could get there? And so he set out to thank the construction workers for the work that they did to make that road right. But again, it gets a little strange. So he sets out to find the people that made the pavement material, how they combined it together and loaded it into trucks to make the road. Now I want to be clear, Jacob actually set out to find all of these people and then thank him, the people responsible for all factors of preparing his cup of coffee. Now the next step in his journey was to go to the plant that combines the materials to make the coffee cups. And he learned how this plastic lid for his coffee cup was invented and got to thank the individual that made and designed that piece for his cup. Now this may sound a bit comical. I think that you can see how complicated it is to say thank you for the things that we count, encounter in our daily lives. Now as a footnote to his long journey, Jacob met some of the most wonderful people in his life each in their own special way, contributed to that morning cup of coffee. From barista, to paper cups, to truck drivers, and I could go on and on. I think you get the idea. You know, my birthday was a couple weeks ago, and I received a gift from one of our staff members, and so I did the right thing. I sent a thank you card, but I didn't have the home address, so I th sent it to the church. And as I was sitting at my computer working on my sermon, I heard her say, thank you for the thank you card. And I said, well, thank you for thanking me for the thank you card. And we almost entered into this infinite loop. And I said, no, no, we got to stop. Because it was getting weird. But then the question came to mind as I'm writing this sermon, what if we forget to say thank you? In light of this upcoming holiday, Thanksgiving holiday, I would like to consider that question. What if we forget to say thank you? There's a short story in the Gospel of Luke that captured my attention as I thought through this. It's about ten men who suffered from a de terrible disease called leprosy. Luke writes it this way. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back and praising God with a loud voice, he prostrated himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus then asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and praise to God except for this foreigner? Then he said to them, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. 
The story ends with only one man returning to Jesus to say thank you. The others were nowhere to be found. Furthermore, the one who did return was a Samaritan. Let's just say Samaritans were not looked favorably upon by the Jews of the day. I guess you could best describe them as pagans or heathens. So this, with Thanksgiving right around the corner, and as I've been thinking a bit about thank yous in A.J. AJ Jacob's book, I've decided to write an open letter to God. And I'd like to share that with you this Sunday morning. It goes like this. Dear God, Lord, I have a question. It is something that has been on my mind for quite some time, especially with Turkey Day right around the corner. What, what if I forget to say thank you? What if I am like one of the ten men in the leprosy that in Luke's gospel? You know, the ten men who were made clean and only one of them came back to say thank you? And God, what if I forget to say thank you for the food that you have given me to eat? You know, I'm pretty sure in my lifetime I haven't missed a meal in the last 60 years. You know, I open my kitchen cupboards and I look and I see it overflowing with cans and boxes and bags of food and I proclaim, there's nothing good to eat. If I say thank you, if I say, forget to say thank you, would you see to it that my cupboards are made bare and that my family and I must learn what it means to be hungry? But there's more, God. What if I forget to say thank you for the air that I breathe, the clean, crisp air of southwestern Minnesota, a place where pollution has not totally destroyed our atmosphere, would you see to it that I suffocated, Lord? And Lord, what if I forgot to say thank you for the water, pure, clean water, to quench my thirst, and all I have to do is go to my t kitchen and touch the tap, and it's right there at my fingertips. Would you see to it that I learned what thirst means by walking miles to carry water to my home, water that might be infested with disease and pollution? Would you see to it that the lakes and streams that I love so much and hike around and swim in are turned into cesspools and rivers of sewage? And God, what if I forget to say thank you for warmth? Would you take away the new furnace I just installed in my house, and my house becomes a freezer? Would you let the sun burn out and allow the world to become a frozen wasteland? What if I forget to say thank you, Lord, for my house, for my comfortable place to live? Would you see to it that my family and I are thrown onto the street and exposed to the winter elements? And Lord, what if I say, forget to say thank you for my work, for the job that I have that not only gives me a paycheck, but also gives me a purpose? Would I then be unemployed, begging for money to feed my family? What if I forget to say thank you, Lord, for recreation, for toys, and for play? Would you see to it that my bike is stolen, and my wood shop and tools are destroyed? And what if I forget, Lord, to say thank you for the wild things, the deer, the pheasants, the trout, the walleye, the geese, the squirrels, the turkeys, the songbirds. Would you take them away from me? And what if I forget to say thank you for my children and my grandchildren, the miracles that they are? And what if I forget, Lord, to say thank you for my wife, the one who loves me like no other, who regards me worthy of sharing her with me. Would you take her from me if I forgot to say thank you? What if I forget to say thank you for you loving me into existence and for watching over me every day like a mother watches over her child. Would you erase my life, take it away from me, erase any memory of my existence? 
And God, what if I forget to say thank you for Jesus, your son, for the reality that he would love me enough to give up everything for me, even your dear son, Lord. Would you cut me off forever if I forgot to say thank you? No. No, absolutely not. The answer, of course, is no. In all cases, you will not forget my thanklessness ever. No, you are not vindictive. You are not vengeful. No, you continue to shower me with blessings every single day of my life. You shower me with more blessings than I can begin to number. All of this, even as I forget to say thank you. And that, Lord, is precisely why I owe you my thanks. Today, I say thank you, Lord, even though yesterday I may have forgotten and may even forget tomorrow. Forgive me, Lord, for taking all that I have for granted. Today, I did not forget to say thank you, Lord. Amen and thank you, Lord. I invite the assembly to stand as you are able as we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the people of God, gathered here and throughout the world, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all in need. Almighty God, you love us and free us through the death and resurrection of your Son. Lead your church through the gospel. Bless pastors, deacons, musicians, teachers, and all who speak your truth. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. You reveal your goodness through the majesty of what you have created. Bring favorable weather to places affected by storms. Protect plants and animals from devastation. And guide us in our use of all natural resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You desire justice in the world. Grant to courts wise and discerning judges, attorneys, and public defenders, and guide the rulers of nations to bring about peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You are our beginning and end. Soothe the afflicted, comfort the distressed, console the bereaved, and heal the sick, especially those we name out loud or silently in our hearts. Give all who provide care a measure of your compassion and peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us to serve our neighbors. Nourish us with word and sacrament so that we serve as your hands and feet in the world. 
Protect those who are traveling and bless those who are unable to attend worship today. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have no one to pray for them. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Hear our prayers, spoken and silent, that we commend to you today, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. You may be seated. We will receive our tithes and our offerings.
Please stand. Let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now, people of God, receive this blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord lift you up and keep you in peace. Amen. Our closing song. Now go in peace. Share the good news.